Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in North Carolina. I've just decided I'm going to vote for Mac Winslow for governor. <laughs> He's a great nephew, grew up in Roxborough, North Carolina, and it was great to have him uh, do a great reading. Let me tell you why we're here today at a new location with a different view. We're here on historic grounds with our majestic and beautiful state capitol behind us, looking at our capital city and the rest of our state. We're at the intersection of government and Main Street. We're also here to respect our rich history with many of our past and present leaders to help us understand that the good things in our state haven't happened by accident. They happen through hard work. Some of those leaders are here with us today. Our state legislature, our council of state, and members of the judiciary along with members of our federal delegation. Thank you for being here. I'd like to also extend a special welcome to Governor Bob McDonald, although his plane got fogged in this morning. But he's from the great state of Virginia. He's became a good friend of mine. And uh, they share a common border and our rich tradition and history and I'm looking forward to working with the governor and at times competing with him too and beating him. <laughs> and I welcome my friends, my family that are here today, especially my wife, Ann. As the newspaper said, she stole the show last night. She's gonna make a great first lady. I'd like to also thank Governor Easley and Governor Jim Martin for being here. Y'all please give them a round of applause. Thank you, Governor. And my good friend from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Lieutenant Governor Jim Gardner, thank you for being here and being a great MC to this event. Please give Jim Gardner a round of applause. And to Governor Beverly Perdue, a very special thank you, Governor. I thank you for your many years of public service to the state and to the people of North Carolina. Please stand and give Governor Perdue a round of applause to thank her for her public service. You know, not too many uh, years ago, it was main streets just like this that brought my parents to North Carolina in 1966. When our family moved to Guilford County, North Carolina was poised to be the role model of the new South for the next 40 years. It was a state where civil rights activists became pioneers for their courageous stands in Durham and Greensboro. It was the place to locate new industry that built things, designed new products, and created high-tech jobs. We also became a financial and transportation hub for the nation and even the world. And we proudly built a university system that attained a reputation for quality education, research, affordability, and a strong workforce. Like thousands of others from across the nation, my parents realized that North Carolina was the place to live, work, and raise a family. And because of their decision in 1966, I proudly stand here today and thank my parents. My dad, Mac McCrory wrote a draft of a book 
called Anatomy of Achievement, and it guides me today. In it, he said, for society, the reality is that mankind is going to solve its problems and fulfill the covenant. My dad taught me that each one of us have been given the talent and ability within ourselves. Now it's each of our responsibilities to fulfill our potential. And main streets from Raleigh and across the state are similar today as they were when our family moved here. They are the hearts and souls of our communities. But we also know that there is a lot of pain right now in those communities. Too many people are out of work. Our state's unemployment is sadly the fifth highest in the country. And many of our leaders in Washington struggle to find solutions working together. But ladies and gentlemen, there is another way. As I look out toward Main Street, with government at our back, I see unlimited opportunity. Government should not and cannot be a barricade or an obstacle to progress. Our face and our approach should be outward, like we are today, not inward. We must share that philosophy and that approach to main streets across North Carolina, from Greensboro, my town where I grew up in, to Goldsboro, from Tarboro to Carboro, from Asheville to Elizabeth City. We know this philosophy works because we have done it before. My parents and your parents North Carolina was filled with unlimited opportunity. That's why they come, came here. Opportunity not only for them, but for their kids to get a good education, to get a job, to fulfill their potential. It is time for us to make sure that North Carolina fulfills and even exceeds its, its potential once more. And it starts today. One thing is certain, North Carolina's greatest strength and asset remains its people. On those main streets across this state, it's the people that count and that make a difference. People will come from different backgrounds but share a common set of principles, self-starters and hard workers. And as I've traveled throughout this state, there's no doubt to me that the ultimate self-starters and entrepreneurs are our farmers. Give them a round of applause. I'm very proud of them. While I may have been a mayor of a great urban area, I love and respect those in agriculture. They know the workings of markets and the economy better than anyone else, including those on Wall Street. They've kept our state strong for generations and we must continue to grow as they continue to grow. Manufacturing is also what brought my mom and dad here. And we know it is an important part of our state's economy. But sadly, many of those jobs left as manufacturing and competition changed. People across the globe are looking for quality products and we need to once more see made in North Carolina labels across the globe. But those products can't be delivered without a strong and trained workforce matched to the skills required by employers. And I'm convinced North Carolina can be a leader in manufacturing once again. In order for that to happen, we also have to make sure that goods can be able to travel through our state like no other in the country. And the transportation industry can continue to thrive. And we plan to do that with a 25-year infrastructure and transportation plan for North Carolina.
North Carolina has also been a, a pillar in finance, especially in my hometown of Charlotte. But the past several years have brought significant challenges for this industry. We have all felt the pain, and we're continuing to feel it today. And we are, of course, known as the friendliest state for the military. We honor their service more than anybody. And when our soldiers come home from Afghanistan and Iraq and from throughout the world, their leadership skills and talent will help us even more grow our economy right here in North Carolina. Even travel and tourism in our beautiful state that once thrived has felt the pressure from competition due to the recession and from competition from other states. It's time to polish up our brand and once more say, come check out North Carolina, see our beauty and spend your money right here. <laughs> Agriculture, manufacturing, transportation, finance, the military, travel and tourism, and many more successful industries. We've had great successes, but frankly, some of the wounds had been camouflaged, were uncovered and exposed during the recession. We face challenges as a state, and today we are setting a new strategy and vision, a new strategy and vision to unleash the strength of our industries and the entrepreneurial talent and energy of our citizens. We will lead the way once again right here in North Carolina. Now, to let, I need to let the citizens of North Carolina know one thing, and that is government cannot solve all these problems alone because, frankly, there is no new money falling out of the sky. Like struggling families across our state, government has to live within its means. We should not ask for more money from you because the result will be more pain to families and small businesses on Main Street. Instead, government is going to pay its bills, moving away from borrowed time and borrowed money. But let me tell you what we can do in government. We will work with you to form partnerships, encourage entrepreneurships, and promote an environment that encourages growth, innovation, research, and intellectual curiosity. Government must work with businesses as partners, not against them as adversaries, to identify and eliminate burdensome taxes, rules, regulations that stifle our economic growth. While states around us during the past several years have created jobs and fundamentally reformed the way their governments operate, we have too often relied on short-term solutions to very complex long-term problems. For too long, our state's departments and agencies have operated in silos, often ignoring the needs of the very people we serve and creating inefficiencies with your tax dollars. We have the opportunity to transform our culture of government through a top-to-bottom assessment of efficiency, effectiveness, and more than anything, a culture of customer service. We will find efficiencies and work together as government collaborating and sharing resources across departments and agencies. We will institute the highest ethical standards for all the, who serve in government, through our actions, you will know that we understand this is your government. I am very proud that, of the cabinet that we have selected. They are a great team, 
And my cabinet is already working to identify these efficiencies and find ways to collaborate, share resources, and be more effective. One thing I learned as mayor of Charlotte, I emphasized teamwork, and we got things done. A team effort and philosophy to succeed is what we are bringing to state government, and we need your help. As our team competes for jobs in a highly competitive playing field, quality education for all students, traditional and non-traditional alike, is a key to our success. There's a basic disconnect today between the needs of employers and the skill sets of the unemployed and underemployed. As I have said, we have the fifth highest unemployment rate in the country, and yet, as I travel the state, businesses continually to tell me that they cannot find qualified act applicants to fill their open jobs. We have an opportunity to have an education system to, that works so our students are achieving better results and so our students can get jobs when they graduate. We can do better, we must do better, we will do better in this area. This past Thursday, I had the honor to meet with Governor Hunt in the governor's office about education matters. And even though he is not here today, I want to let you know that the focus on education is here. And the difference now is technology. Technology is a game changer in education. We have at our fingertips the technology that opens up a world of knowledge at the click of a button and a connection to the internet. By embracing and employing new technologies, we can connect. We can connect our students with the best teachers and professors and the best information throughout North Carolina and even around the world. There is no limit to what every student in North Carolina can learn and achieve, and this leads to more efficiencies as well as saving the tax dollars of North Carolina. We must implement this new technology as soon as possible. This technology has no boundaries. It reaches and teaches the poor, the rich, the urban, and the rural. It provides a wide op open opportunity that is restricted only by our own creativity. Let's unleash this technology as soon as possible. Let's encourage our teachers and our students to use it. Let's do it. Let's lead the effort right here in North Carolina on technology, working together with our teachers and with education. You know, we also must improve feedback with our businesses matching the learning skills to the needs of the market, marketplace. There is no excuse then if we do not get people off unemployment and get them into good jobs. If we connect the two together, we will have fewer unemployed people and more people working. In our high schools, two and four year schools, we will provide unlimited opportunity and multiple pathways to success through both vocational and professional development education. You know, my dad always said this. He said there are two basic functions of education. He used to remind me this when I'd cut on the TV and not do my homework. He'd go, go exercise your brain. And frankly, that's one of the functions of education. We must exercise and then use our brains and ignite the spark of potential that each of us have that will lead to our success. And during this past week, while visiting Asheville, Greensboro, New Bern, Charlotte, and being here today in Raleigh, our new home, we have started a conversation for solutions a dialogue for the future, challenging ourselves to think boldly, willing to ask why, and taking the right steps together as a team. Through our actions, let's show our young people 
let's show our young people that public service, whether you're running for school board, whether you're running for city council or county commission or state legislature, or yes, even governor, let's show them that it is an honorable profession. Democrat, Republican, independent, it makes no difference. When coupled with civility, respecting the rights and opinions of others, to agree and disagree, we make better decisions and get even better results. As governor, my approach will be to expand agriculture exports, unleash our energy resources, harness new technology for education, create a climate for existing businesses to expand existing businesses and recruit new businesses to locate and grow jobs while rebuilding the brand of economic development in North Carolina. We will put North Carolina on a better road to recovery. We will grasp our potential from every main street throughout North Carolina. Working together, we can make North Carolina the place of unlimited potential where anyone who studies hard, who works hard, who lives a life with high values, any of these factors, all of these three factors put together, then anyone can fulfill and even exceed their potential, and that means North Carolina will exceed its potential. This is quite an honor for me today. I'm overwhelmed, and I'm honored to be on the main street of our beautiful capital city. Let's leave here together as a team and make North Carolina an even better place in which to live, work, and raise a family. May God bless each one of you, and may God continue to bless the great state of North Carolina. Thank you very much. Thank you.